Welcome to Tokyo Saurus. So what's up in Japan? Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5 Golden Wind has finally come to an end. And what an amazing job done by David Productions from start to finish. So many little details in every scene and even the opening that was so easy to miss if you didn't pause just to take it all in. We're gonna go through all those little things you might have missed in a bit, but to start off, let's get into just what happened in the final fight. Because it is quite rare for a show's finale to end with a two episode special, when the climax of the fight was already finished previously. But the true reason why they decided to do this was because the true climax to this entire story was actually hidden in the last arc, Sleeping Slaves in the last two episodes. But let's start with Giorno vs Diavolo. How exactly did Giorno's Gold Experience Requiem defeat Diavolo? Diavolo's King Crimson effectively has the ability to delete cause but keep the effect. It can erase a given frame of time lasting up to 10 seconds, and during this period other people will be unable to experience anything that happened, while also retaining no memories within that time. So essentially, no matter what you do against him, the outcome is the same. The Avolo or King Crimson will defeat you. And that is the effect. Gold Experience Requiem's ability is the exact opposite of that. So instead of King Crimson deleting the cause but keeping the effect, Gold Experience Requiem will delete the effect but keep the cause. It reduces the effect of the action to zero. So if you imagine reading a manga, King Crimson's ability would be like erasing a frame from the page, while Gold Experience Requiem would be like making you start from the beginning, or from when the action began. It is action nullification at its core. Which means if there is something Jorno wants not to happen, Gold Experience Requiem will nullify it. Did you just try to do something? Because nope, you didn't. It's truly invincible, making it definitely one of the, if not the most OP ability in all of JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, including all the newer parts up to date. But back to Diavolo. When he tried to punch Giorno for the very last time, the punch never lands, or the effect was cancelled. But he continuously punches because the cause was kept. So when Gold Experience Requiem kills Diavolo, him dying, which is the cause, was repeated. But the effect, which is his death, was deleted. Which is how he is now constantly experiencing death without dying, and stuck in this never-ending loop. Now onto the Sleeping Slaves mini-arc that happened in episode 38 and 39 that wraps up the series. Now why did they end the series with this arc instead of giving us this arc before the climax fight between Giorno and Diavolo? Because the author wanted this arc to be what you really take away from the series. I felt like he could have easily put this arc before the final fight happened and still have everything make sense. But instead he chose to end the story with a flashback encounter from the very beginning of the series. On the surface, it just looks like Mista delayed Bucciarati's death and inadvertently gave them the chance to win against the boss at the cost of two of his other teammates. However, once you take a step back and really think about everything that happened and all the characters, you will realize the author had something much deeper planned. It starts with Bucciarati and his team trying to solve a mystery surrounding a young woman that apparently jumped off a roof, but her father suspects there was foul play involving the boyfriend. Turns out the boyfriend had an automatic stand rolling stones that had the ability to predict people's death and when it spots a target that is fated to die soon, it will try to touch the target, instantly killing the target peacefully without damage to spare them the pain. While it was chasing Bucciarati, anyone close to the stone that is not sculpted inside of it are not fated to die which is why Mista jumped down the building and was able to survive it because he knew he was not sculpted on the stone. Once the stone is broken though, it will stop chasing the person. So the stone knew Bucciarati was fated to die and as we already know, it was supposed to happen when he was fatally injured by the boss's King Crimson. But because Mista changed the shape of the stone and effectively changing the fate of Bucciarati, we see the stone ended up changing shape so that instead of just Bucciarati dying at the hand of King Crimson, he survived and continued to lead the group which eventually led Narancha and Abakio to their deaths as well. But here is where it gets interesting. This whole incident with Rolling Stones is just to illustrate that Mista, even understanding how Rolling Stones work, even after understanding that fate has it that Bucciarati will die, Mista will not yield to fate. Without denying it, without trying to run away from it, he faced it head on even if everything was inevitable, he tried his best to save his friend. Obviously, we now know that everyone in the group, maybe with the exception of Fugo, felt the same way. They continued to do what they believed was right for the world and the people around them, even if it meant impossible hardships to overcome. If you just go back and remember each of their flashbacks, pretty much everyone in part 5 had a bad childhood growing up, including Diavolo. But it was only Diavolo that let his experiences corrupt him into becoming this egocentric villain. The rest of the crew took their bad experiences with fate, accepted their reality, took charge to make changes, and continued on with their new lives. But the key difference is, they never lost sight of what was important to them. They never went against their own values just because the world wasn't kind to them, they always stay true to themselves. While Diavolo was the exact opposite of that. He was always trying to run away from fate. Even his stand's ability is to see his own fate before it happens, allowing him to dodge fate whenever he wants. 
which makes his ending even more satisfying knowing that he will have to face death over and over again, but never truly reaching the reality of it. It was a battle between two mindsets, one that would face reality head on, and one that would constantly try to run around it. The ones that face reality head on suffered much more than if they just stayed as sleeping slaves, as Bucciarati would put it at the end, but was able to make their lives meaningful to those around them, while the one that constantly ran away from it had their existence essentially erased from reality. So what they're really trying to say is, don't try to run away from your reality even if it's terrible. Don't blame anyone for it, accept it for what it is. Take charge to change it, even if it may be the harder path to go on. And in the end, it will make everything more meaningful and definitely worth living for. Part 5's narrative is probably one of the harder ones to appreciate until you dig a little deeper compared to the previous JoJo's. But if you look at the story as a whole and the message it's trying to convey rather than just how interesting each of the characters are, then it becomes a much more golden experience. Part 5 is definitely one of the most underrated parts in JoJo as the characters are not as flashy, and Giorno's personality doesn't exactly stand out compared to the other JoJo's. But story-wise, it's definitely up there with the best JoJo's. Anyways, those are my thoughts on JoJo Part 5's finale. But I'm more curious as to what you guys think of the ending and how you would rate this JoJo along with the previous ones. As usual, let me know down in the comments below. Thumbs up the video if you liked it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.